morning champions and welcome back to another episode. You know what this is from the title, we're on the hunt for some beach rooms. Primo bait off the beach and in the estuaries, they cost you an arm and a leg down the tackle store so I'm just going to run through my method for catching them, which might be suitable for the novice but even an experienced beach room and might pick up a couple things just to improve their rates. Anyways, let's get into it. And here we are guys, city beach, low tide. And I could go on for about five minutes about what I'm looking for in a beach and how best to find them and all that. But I figure most of you don't really want to hear that. So I'll put a bunch of information down in the description if you're really new to it and having a hard time just finding worms. But for the moment, beach, low tide, that's all we're looking at. Now let's have a look at the kit. First and foremost, we will be using beach worming pliers. I can get them with my hands, but I'm much more effective with pliers. So I'll just show this off. I might do a, a um, beach worming with hands video in the future. So this is a pair of Albi beach worming pliers. I don't know if there's any other brands that make them, but you do need worming pliers. If you just try and use needle nose ones, you're just gonna be pulling heads. And a handy tip with these is just cut off um, one of the arms here and they close a little bit better. And I've just got a little loop of stocking there which I'll show you what's going on in a second. So worming pliers, a catch bag, preferably one with a little stopper on it. And this is basically gonna be our stink bag or our burly bag which we use to find where the worms are. We'll have a little bait bucket on the hip just to save going back and forth to a bucket on the beach. We've got some stockings, doesn't matter the brand or type or anything like that, just get the cheapest ones and just a knife to cut the stockings and lastly we've got our bait and so you can use any fish frames or bits of old bait keep your old prawns things that don't work as bait if you freeze them if you refreeze them keep them for worming bait so if i go for taylor and salmon i'll get a big block of pillies even if i think i'm going to use half of them and the other half i can use for freeze and use for worming bait okay i'll show you what's going on with the um stockings here so the stockings are gonna serve two purposes. Well, three if you count this little loop on the uh, pliers. But the first one is we're gonna use the length of the sock and that's gonna be for our hand bait that we um, catch the worms with. So you wanna cut off about a foot length. It's better to go longer than shorter. Oop. And what we're gonna do with that is just chuck in a pilly or a half a pilly if they're big ones like this or any bit of fish that you've got. So we're just going to chuck that one down in there. And then we're going to tie it around your opposite hand. I just do a simple double overhand. And it's good to make it um, slack so that you can take it off if you want to have a break but just tight enough that you can drop it and have your hand free the other use for the stocking is for chucking any small bits of bait such as your pillies and little bits of fish into your um, stink bag so that they don't wash away or come out of the holes so we're just going to cut another length chuck a knot in this end And then you can put your hand in it and just pick up any small bits that are gonna, gonna wanna go in there. Like that. Pull your hand back over the top. And then tie a knot in that. All right, now that's ready to go in our stink bag along with the big bits of fish. And an oily fish is better than a clean one. Like I've used whiting um, frames and that in the past and they don't go as well as such like a uh, mullet or a salmon or a tail or anything like that. 
and I'll generally always make sure I've got a few pillies because they are the best hand bait in my opinion and also the best thing to have in your bag really oily so once we've filled our stink bag what we're going to do is pull our stopper right the way down to the end and then we're going to do another overhand knot but we're not going to pull the tag end all the way through we're going to cinch it up tight and we're just going to pull it through till that stop that knot stops against this other one and we formed a nice loop Rightio, I'll kit up and what we'll do is um, we'll go through a dry run because once we're down there and catching the worms, it's going to happen very quickly. So we'll do that now. Okay, and here is the setup. We've got our pliers on our right hand looped over it. We've got our hand bait in our left hand and I've just got the bait bag hanging over my pinky. And this is the way I do it, which I think is the fastest and most efficient way to catch worms. If you're having a hard time managing the um, stink bag and catch them at the same time, you can just hoik it up the beach when you're trying to target a specific worm, or you can stake it in the ground with a metal pole or something like that. As well as you can put a star sinker on the end here and it's just gonna stop it getting washed all the way down into the gutter. But basically what we're gonna be doing is standing up near the high water mark, waving our stink bag back and forth and letting it go back with the waves. And then when we spot a worm, which we've got our little dummy worm down here, what we're going to do is come down and stand side on with it. And then what we're going to do as water's receding, we're going to swirl the stink bag and then we're going to plant our bait just on the top of the water here in front of him. And as water's receding, you'll see his head come out and he's going to start going a little crazy trying to pick up particles coming back down. And we're going to plant the bait into his mouth and so what I do when the water's receding I flick this up out of the way and do that come down plant it into his mouth and with the stocking what they want to do because they feel that they can't take it just straight down you see him work their jaws around in it to get a really good hold once you've seen that he's got his jaws into it we're actually going to pull this slightly away it's going to expose his neck a little bit more and then we're going to come in palm up with the pliers and just around his head and as soon as we get the chance we're going to clamp down really fast and quite firmly as well at this point what he's going to do is he's going to tense up and not want to come out of the sand so depending on the size of the worm and the sand that he's in sometimes they are really really difficult to pull out this beach particularly they are quite difficult to pull out so what I will be doing is clamping down and as soon as I do that, I'll be dropping that. I stand on my bag to stop it going away. And I'm digging down just a tiny bit and pinching the worm with my fingers and taking the pliers away. Because there is a chance that he'll slip through the pliers or some just seem to have a weak spot and you will um, pop the head off him, which isn't good. You don't want that. Now that we've got him, we're not trying to pull him out at all. We're going to wait for water to be going either back, with, back or forth and we're going to drop the pliers and dig down and dig down as far as you can while there's still water coming around and grab up a hold of him like that under the sand. We're going to give him a feel, see if he wants to come out like that. If need be, we're going to dig down again with this hand, get another hold and pull him out. And make sure you pull with both hands and even if you can get that much further down, it's going to make a big difference to get him out of the sand. Right, let's give it a go. And we have stacks of worms here at the moment. So here's this wave, wave recedes. You'll see all these little V's poking up in the sand. They look like pebbles. Here we go. Couple down the back. There we go, that was a good one. I'll just give you a bit of a close up look at him. So that's what we're looking out for. Here we go, yes sir. Let's see if we can get him to poke his head out a bit for us. There we go, there's a beach worm. Heaps of them. So we might even have a go at that one there. So all we're going to do is come up and stand side on with him. So he's directly underneath my head when I bend over. And here, we're just going to feed it back down to him. Let him get a good grip. Pull him out a bit, clamp down. Step on the bag, swap over the hands, and I'm not trying to pull him out at all, I'm just stopping him from going down. 
just gonna have to wait for a wave to come in. And I'm pinching him like that. Here we go, now we're gonna dig down right next to him. They go just straight up and down in the sand, so dig just straight down next to the other hand. Oh, does he wanna come out? Yep, this one wants to come out, just dig him down once. And there we go, that's a lovely little stumpy worm, or what they call king worms in the bait shop. So you'll have stumpies, which are these ones. They get up to probably about 60 centimeters and really thick. And then you get slimies, which are a lot longer, reportedly getting to three meters, but also quite skinnier. So there we go, that was the first time we had a crack at. We got him, super simple guys. Probably one thing to look out for, and look, you're gonna have to bust a few worms to, to get the feeling right is knowing when they want to come like come out of the sand i'm just pulling so gently and if i feel that i need to i'll dig down i can dig down up to four times with my hands to um to know that he's going to come out you definitely don't want to snap them off it looks like we should get a fair few here pretty quickly so oh, that one got a little bit of our bait oh you got a scale give us back that scale there you go, there's another one right here. Oh, there's a good one. So he's just underneath my head here. Gonna flick that up out of the way. Bring this down to him. Where is he? Plant it in his mouth. Pull it out a bit, clamp down. He's dead set that easy. Swap over the fingers. Now we're just waiting for a wave. That easy. There is a way with your hands that you can get them at the right time that they won't tense up. Even when I get them with my hands, they seem to tense up. I haven't figured out the timing of that. But with this method, it obviously takes a little bit longer, but you're just very efficient with the pliers. So we're just waiting for a wave. And all I'm doing is stopping him going down, not pulling at all. There we go, we're going to dig down right next to it. As fast as we can, as deep as we can. There we go, another one. Easy peasy. And you will find that the bigger ones are going to be down further. But that also means that they're harder to catch because you're going to deal with more waves coming through. Look at this guy. Bloody everywhere at the moment. So there was three good ones there. There he is. There we go, there's one. If you want to come out? Nah, he's playing hard to get. So I've got two, I'll just stand here. So you just want to have them so they're right underneath your head when you bend over to get them. We might get a chance here, see what this wave does. You also want to take your time, if you try and rush it and poke them or something like that, they're just going to be spooked. So we'll see if we get a shot here. Here's a nice one. So he's going to plant it in his mouth, Whoop, there we go mate. Let him get a good grip, pull out, step on the bag, change over to our fingers. There we go, even this little bit of water is going to let us dig down. Change hands, and then I'm going to dig down again. Probably not seeing much. Oh, I just accidentally busted him, but I've still got him. So there we go. Oh, so that one's a slimy. You can see he's a bit longer, or he might just be a very skinny stumpy. There we go. We got rid of his head, but we still got a fair few good baits there. So some places you can get them while there's no water there. We've just got a little thin film. 
but most of the time you're gonna have to wait for a wave to recede. See how it's just gone shy. For some places, um, if they're not very pressured, they will willingly come out when um, there's no water going back over. They're just very hungry and haven't been um, targeted very much. So you will find that city beaches tend to have pretty toey worms, whereas if you go to a um, pretty remote beach, they can be pretty dumb and easy to get. But there's absolutely tons of them here. Have a look at that. Jesus. Let's see if we can get a big bopper. Wow, really good supply of them. And you can get them year round. Yeah, this one looks like he's hungry. Hey, he's only a pretty little one. Let's see if we can get him with our fingers, actually. Nah. Spooked him. And what you will also find is that the worms tend to school up with like-sized worms. So if you find a patch of really little ones, just keep walking up and down the beach and you hopefully find a patch of really big ones. So let's see. We got one here. I mean, they're everywhere. Now we'll give that a swirl. Flick it up, get out of the road, use your hand bait. Where are you? There's one, right there. Let him latch on, pull out a bit, clamp down. Easy peasy. And so you do got to wait for the water to be going back and forth because if you dig now, it's just going to fill in on itself. So any little bit of water. Oh. Dig down, dig down, dig down, dig down. There we go, another little stumpy. Perfect. Absolutely tons of them. Go and get a good grip, buddy. There we go. Nope. He's a bit doughy, this one. We got him. There we go. So yeah, if you try and dig now, the hole's just gonna fill in on itself. You might be able to get a little bit further down, but any little bit of water is gonna soften that sand up. So we can get a good grip down further. Oh, I might have to get it. Dig once more here for this one. Because even if I just get another inch further underneath him and can pull with both hands, it makes all the difference. And there we go. Lovely. So, just got one right under our heads here. Flick that up out of the way. Use our hand bait. There he was. Let him get a good chew on it. There we go. Clamp. So with this way, with pliers, you're not waiting for them to arch their back or anything like that. Oh, he's a strong one. Yeah, you don't have to wait for them to arch their back or anything like that. If you've got a shot at them, just go for it. Jeez, he's slipping through my fingers, this one. They do also um, tire out. So if you've got a hold of him for quite a while, you'll notice that eventually he'll, um, his muscles will kind of fail on him, I guess, and he'll um, suddenly become easier to pull out. This guy, he's gone down a bit, a bit deep. There we go, got him. Lovely.
guys, have a look at that for a little haul. About 45 minutes of work with a couple camera difficulties thrown in as per usual. And that is going to be plenty for a session chasing some brim as well as chucking a couple on hold for some dewies later. And the regulation is you're allowed 20 worms or parts of worms. And they do want to break up on you. It doesn't matter if you use your fingers or use your pliers. Some of them just wriggle, wriggle themselves apart. But what I'll do now is I'll show you how I like to treat them. Just roll it in some dry sand and that way they're going to keep up to about three days. So we'll go do that now. All right, now we're just going to dust our worms in some um, cool dry sand. And that's going to allow them to keep up to three days. The drier it is, the better. So if you've only got damp sand to work with, they're only going to keep good for maybe a day and a half, two days. Um, so it's often handy to um, have at home just a, a nice stack of dry sand. That way, if you go worming and it's been raining or a bit dewy and whatnot, you're going to have some uh, dry sand at home to treat them in. If you do want to keep them longer than three days, you can put them in a bucket with some seawater and an aerator and they'll keep for a fair bit longer. I reckon they're going to keep up to two weeks if you keep changing the water out, but they're probably going to be breaking themselves up over that time as well, which is inevitable, as I said before. So what I like to do is we're going to get out a bunch, lay them in the sand, and we're going to actually see if we can find any worms that are still whole. Because what I like to do is place them worms at the bottom of the uh, bait container and they're going to stay alive for longer. So here's a nice, nice whole worm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a coat and then I'm actually going to pull off this slime layer. And I've got a little theory that it's actually their slime, their own slime that makes them go off and they don't like having it around them. So we're going to give them a dust in some dry sand. We're going to give them another dust after we pull it off. Right, gonna put a bit of dry sand in the bottom of this bait container and chuck him in there. And I'm just gonna keep doing that with any whole ones and then I'm gonna put the, um, the ones that are in pieces up on top of them so I can use them first. And I do have two bait containers because I've got quite a few worms and you don't want to um, crowd them in there otherwise that slime is gonna accumulate. So dust him, wipe it off, dust him again. And I'm just going to get a little layer of worms there. And then, that's probably enough in there at the moment actually. And then just do some dry sand. Pack it out, then another layer. So there you go. Um, there is a way to preserve beach worms as well um, using metho, but I think that's going to be an episode for another time. Rightio, and there we have it guys. Heaps of bait for a session of Sabo tonight and tomorrow. You ripper. Well, I hope you've enjoyed and I hope you've picked up a thing or two to help you get onto them. Take your time, don't get frustrated and uh, good luck to you. I'll see you next time. I got the smallest worm on the beach. <laughs> <laughs>